Welcome, I'm Gordon L, aka World of Depth, and today I'll be talking about how you can actually use several free and publicly available artificial intelligence programs to do handy things like upscale your images, colorize black and white images, and to do 3D specific things like create depth maps and use depth maps to animate images. Alright, so let's start out looking at some examples of what we will learn to produce in this workshop. In this example, we'll start with a black and white photo of a young Mr. Rogers, and we can use AI to do things like colorize it like this. You'll notice, of course, many imperfections here, but compared with the time and energy required to colorize a black and white photo by hand, there's no question that you could do worse than use this as a starting point, for example. We can also use AI to convert this into a fully 3D stereo pair, such as this. When I show these four image panels, by the way, the cross-eye view will be on top and parallel view on the bottom. We can also use AI to convert this into an animated stereo pair. And here's another example. If we start with this photo, we can produce an animation like this one. Notice that although this animation itself is 2D, it is based on an underlying 3D model. So let's look at a flowchart that will show the various programs and AIs we're going to talk about today and what they allow us to do. So first, if we start with a stereo pair, you probably already know that we can use Masaji Suto's Stereo Photo Maker and Ugo Capetto's DMAG program to create a depth map from that. Now, importantly, it gives us both a left and a right depth map, or what we might call a stereo depth map. So, for example, if we start with the image, the stereo photo shown above, and by the way, for these three cross images, it will be cross-eyed on the left and parallel on the right, we can produce the depth map shown below. I've rendered these depth maps using the Inferno color map palette to better appreciate the details, and I also edited a little by hand, but nonetheless, that's what you can produce. Once you have that depth map, there are many things you can do. For one, you can take either the left or right original image plus depth map, feed it into SPM, and produce a new stereo pair with adjusted depth. For example, you could take the following somewhat shallow stereo pair and deepen it like so, accentuating the pop-out effect. This is handy with stereo photos taken by devices with pretty narrow interoculars, like the old LG Thrill, which is what I used for this picture, or the Red Hydrogen 1. Conversely, if you had a stereo photo with substantial depth and you were preparing to show it via projector, you might produce a shallower stereo pair using the same methodology. Here, by the way, is the depth map from SPM and DMAG that I used to produce this effect. Another thing you can do is use Stereo Photo Maker or Photoshop to apply a selective background blur. For example, with this stereo photo, which arguably has a distracting background, you can blur it slightly like this. And this was accomplished using this depth map, which is not perfect, but suffices for this effect. Note that to get this effect in true 3D, you need to use the left depth map to blur the original left eye image and repeat the same for the right. There are many other potential applications, but the final one I'll talk about here is using the AI called 3D Photo Inpainting to create a stereo animation. Here is an example of a zooming in and out animation of a stereo photo I hope you recognize, and here is the depth map I used to create that. So that's what we can do starting with a stereo pair. But one of the most crucial things that artificial intelligence allows us to do is to do many of the same things, but starting from an ordinary 2D image. As before, the first step is really creating a depth map, and now there are many artificial intelligence programs that will do this. The first one that was widely available that I tried is by Google. The second one is called MIDAS, which stands for Mixing Datasets for Zero Shot Cross Dataset Transfer. And the third one, which is so new it didn't even make it on this flowchart, is called LERES, L-E-R-E-S, which stands for Learning to Recover 3D Scene Shape from a Single Image. I'll also talk about Boosting Monocular Depth, or BMD, here, which is essentially an algorithm that improves MIDAS and LERES. Here's an example. This is a 2D photo originally by Stephen Pisano, and when we use Boosting Monocular Depth and MIDAS to estimate a depth map for it, 
we get this. You might notice some small imperfections like the spires of the building leaning too far forward, but the amount of detail and the general accuracy is pretty astounding. Once we have this depth map, we can do many of the same things as on the stereo pair track above. We can't really do the depth adjustment because there's no depth to adjust as this is still a 2D image, but we can use Stereo Photo Maker or Photoshop to apply a background blur. For instance, we can take this photo and change it to this. You might appreciate it already, but really the primary reason modern camera phones have depth sensing technology is to do precisely this. In other words, to simulate a shallow depth of field for portrait photos. Here is the depth map from BMD and Midas that I used for this effect. In addition to background blur, we can, as before, use the 3D photo inpainting AI to create an animation, albeit a mono animation. This animation I showed earlier was produced this way. And here's the depth map behind it. So those are two applications of a mono depth map. However, if we want to go beyond mono into stereo, we can thankfully feed the original image plus depth map into Stereo Photo Maker to produce a 3D stereo pair, and thereby have access to everything on the top of this diagram, even starting with a 2D image, thanks to artificial intelligence. So now let's talk about how actually to use the AIs, and I'd like to ease into this and start with one that is not 3D specific, but that is useful and accessible to anyone. A long-standing problem in graphics is how best to enlarge small images. If we do this with no frills, we tend to get results that are pixelated and or grainy. Some programs use sharpening or interpolation algorithms to get slightly better results, but still if you zoom in on this one here you can see it's quite blurry. But now there are AI programs which can recognize lines and contours, and despite some occasional strange connections, will generally and reliably give you superior results. Perhaps the easiest implementation of this is BigJPEG.com, a free browser program. You simply go to this website, select your image to upload, select from several options, which are somewhat limited depending on whether you're a member, hit the start button and wait maybe a couple minutes, and simply download your now enlarged image. This website allows you to process a few images per day for free and without registering. You can, of course, pay to remove these limitations. And by the way, I'll post in the chat or video description a web page that collects all the links I'll mention today. The other general AI application I'll be talking about is colorizing black and white images. Perhaps the best and easiest implementation is at Deep AI here where you simply upload your image and it immediately produces a colored version. However, its output is limited to about 800 pixels in size. If you want to work with full-size images or videos or tweak the numerous settings and options that exist under the hood, then we need to go beyond a simple ready-made website like this and learn how to use the AI more directly. This is where Google Colab comes in. So Collaboratory is essentially a free Google service aimed at students and researchers that lends you an extremely powerful cloud computer, notably one that is advanced enough to train and run the neural networks that underlie many artificial intelligence programs. And technically, you don't even need a Google account to use it, though it does make it more convenient. This is a Google Colab notebook, so essentially a document that contains text and code. Many AI researchers will create public notebooks like this one so people can try out their AIs. So this one is for the Artistic Colorizer AI by Robinson and Benevente. This is a slightly custom notebook I've made to allow uh, for image uploading instead of just using images at links. But anyway, these blocks, these blocks here are called cells. These are text cells. And if we just skip down a little bit, this gray cell right here is code in the Python programming language. When we hover over it, if we hit this play button, it will basically run the cell in this code. And if you look at my uh, helpful directions here, what we'll do is basically go to each cell, run the code in it, wait for the code to run, which may take a minute or two, and then proceed down to the next cell. Now for this notebook in particular, we do have to do this first. Follow the directions here. We have to go to runtime, 
change runtime type, make sure GPU is selected, and save that. All right, so let's start running code. Here's the first cell, and we'll, uh, oh, here we go. And most of them will be pretty quick. We'll see what happens here. Okay, there we go. Starting out, it'll sometimes notify of the progress, and this one is done. You can see the check mark here, and you can see the spinning progress bar has disappeared. And now we'll run this next code. Just changes a directory. Now we're into setup, and you can optionally read this. This must be the first call, yada yada. Okay, we'll just run it. And depending on basically what time of day you run these and how much uh, how much virtual computing resource is available out there, some of these cells may run faster or slower. Okay, and now we're down to this cell. And note at this one, oh, okay, got a lot of stuff happening with this one. Oh. And you can see here I already have a note you can ignore the warning produced at the end of this cell above here. So even this, even though this says you must restart the runtime, we're not going to do that for now because it uh, will take too long. You can do that if you want in order to run a newer version of some accessory program, but let's skip this for now. Okay, so now this, now this cell. Okay, and that is done. Now another one. And it is downloading from some third-party websites here. Sometimes the availability of these third-party links, which are, you know, maybe resources that the, that the researchers put online, again, you see here this is from DeepAI, sometimes they may become unavailable, so you might run into errors in Colab notebooks. Um, it's really dependent on the, of course, the providers, how long they keep these resources available. But uh, hopefully many will stay up for a long time. Okay, this is done. And one more here. And this will be the only notebook that I show you in real time, just to walk through, uh, walk through one at least. And we'll see, this one should be, okay, all done here. And now let's go down here. All right, so now I'll be following these instructions below. You can read through these as a reminder if you use this on your own, but I'll just go through the steps. So what we'll do first is click this folder icon on the left to open up a look at our files. Hovering over this deoldify folder, I will click on the three dots and select a file to upload. Now I've already done that, but what you would do next is <clears throat> click on this triangle to open up the deoldify folder. Navigate through here to find the image you just uploaded. In this case, here is mine, 2.jpg. Hover over this, click the three dots again, and now select copy path, which is basically the location of your file. Then we can close this if we want. Then we're going to come down here to this colorized cell and paste the text that we just copied in here and it should start with slash content slash deal blah 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 so this is my file and now we simply run this cell and you can uh, you can change these settings there's some info on what the settings does uh, above here you can also turn on or off a watermark but here's what happens if we just run this it will process for a bit. And again, this will depend on oh, resources available, but then it should uh, show you your picture right here. And here's a comparison with the original. Now, if we want to save this directly, we can simply right click, go to save image as, or whatever the equivalent is in your browser. And there you go. There's the first Colab notebook we've used. Now one note, if you're using multiple different Colab notebooks, uh, and in general it's a good idea after you're done using it to go up here to runtime, to manage sessions, and to terminate your session. So you stop using this virtual computer they've loaned you. 
If you do not do this, you will not be able to open additional notebooks sometimes, and also sometimes Google Colab will complain about you opening too many sessions. All right, so those were a couple general use AIs. Now let's go on and talk about some 3D AIs, starting with BMD, which is the first one you would use when working with a 2D image. All right, so here is the Google Colab notebook for boosting monocular depth. This is basically an algorithm which increases the detail of depth maps produced by Midas and Larez. To run this, we're going to follow the instructions here, uh, starting with changing the runtime type to GPU as we did uh, with the last notebook. Then on step one, we're going to run code section one, the first cell in gray there. Then on step two, for putting your test images inside content inputs, we're going to click on the folder icon to the left as we did before to open up the files. Then we're going to hover over the inputs folder and click on the three dots that appear to select upload. And again, we can expand the inputs folder, clicking on that little arrow, that little triangle to the left to confirm our files have uploaded successfully. Our next step will be to run code section two, which will load various files for the AI. And finally, in the third code sections, we can choose to either run this method using Midas or Lares, or both if you do one after the other. No matter which you run, the output will look something like this. So basically, this BMD algorithm divides your original image up into several patches, depending on where it thinks there is the most detail. It processes each patch individually, and then reassembles it. You can find the depth map outputs in these output folders to the left here, saved as PNG files, which you can then download. As far as which is better between Midas and Lares, I think they really have different strengths and weaknesses. So Midas was trained primarily on sets of photographs of people, so I think it does better overall with shots of people. However, as you can see here, it has flattened Mr. Rogers' nose a little bit, uh, though it does a better job of keeping his ears connected to his head, uh, as you can see with the Lares version. Meanwhile, Lares does a better job of picking out background details, as you can see perhaps with the dimensionality of that bush at right compared with how flat it is in the Midas version. Uh, however, Lares, I think, can be overactive. If you have a picture of someone wearing clothing with a graphical print on it, or if you have photographs or artwork hanging on a wall, it will go after all of those and try to make all of them 3D. Fortunately, it's pretty easy to test both on any image you'd care to try, and then you can test out the results using Stereo Photomaker or Ugo Capetto's Depth Player, etc. I should note here that these AI depth maps will always have flaws, always imperfections, and whether or not you want to take the time and energy to correct them by hand I think really depends on your purpose and the final product you have in mind. Editing and correcting depth maps, of course, is the topic for another workshop. But for example, applications like producing a 2D animation or applying a background blur to a stereo pair are going to be much more forgiving of small flaws in the depth maps than, say, producing a 3D stereo pair or a stereo animation. I'll go over one more method for producing depth maps, and that's Midas version 3. So BMD, which we just went over, uses Midas version 2.1. So the difference is that BMD plus Midas will produce depth maps that are very detailed, whereas Midas version 3 will produce depth maps that are a little simpler but probably more accurate. I have found that Midas version 3 depth maps are better for certain applications like making Facebook 3D photos. So here's how to use it. Once again, I've made a custom Colab notebook for this Midas, uh, which will allow you to upload your own images. So you can follow the written directions I have here, but I'll walk you through a little bit of it now. Again, you'll start by running the code in this first gray box, then you'll upload your image by going to the left, clicking the folder icon to open the files, now clicking on this upload button, then you'll find your file, hover over it, click the three dots to copy the path, and then you'll move back in the notebook down below to where it says file name and paste that path here. Again, it should start with slash content, and when you run this cell, it will give you confirmation. Next, you'll run several other code blocks before finally getting to showing and saving the result here, where you'll need to enter a file name for the depth map to be saved. When you run this cell, it will display the depth map and save it as shown to the left.
One word on the output. You can see this is a colored depth map. This uses what is called the Veritas color map palette, and you'll want to convert it to black and white to get a grayscale JPEG file to use it with programs like Stereo Photo Maker. I'll go over one more AI here, and that's 3D Photo Inpainting, abbreviated 3PI here, which you can use to make animations starting from a 2D image and a mono depth map. Or if you run it twice, once for the left eye view, once for the right eye view, you can produce stereo animations. So here's the Colab notebook, and as before, you'll simply run the code cells in descending order. When you get to this Please Upload JPEG Files stage, the cell below actually doesn't work in Firefox and several other browsers, but what you can do instead is upload your files using the methods I've shown before. So you'll want to open up the folder titled 3D Photo in Painting, then upload your starting image to the Image folder, and upload the corresponding depth map to the Depth folder. Notably, the file names need to match between your image and the corresponding depth map, but the original image needs to be JPEG, and the depth map needs to be PNG. If you're feeling trusting, you can skip the depth map and just upload your 2D image, in which case 3PI will automatically use BMD and Midas to create a depth map. However, I highly recommend making the depth map and checking it yourself first. When you run the main program for this AI, it will definitely take a few minutes. By default, it will produce four videos, which will appear in the video folder here. Because it's very computation heavy, once in a while 3PI will run out of memory and fail. When that happens, it's usually because your depth map is either too large and or has too much detail in it. So to fix that, you can try downsizing your original image and the depth map, and also applying a slight Gaussian blur to the depth map and try it again. It's somewhat beyond the scope of this workshop, but there are also lots of different options you can tweak with this AI. To do that, you have to download this arguments.yml file, edit it, and then re-upload it. If you go to the GitHub 3PI page, you'll find configuration information on exactly what the settings are and how you can change them. This is completely optional, but it is handy for things like producing horizontal panning videos, from which you may know you can extract and produce 3D stereo videos. Here's an example of that process. 3PI produced a 2D horizontal panning video, which I then duplicated with a time offset and put side by side to make these stereo videos. Here's another one of 3PI's default output videos, and that's the zoom in video. In this case, I have duplicated and reversed it to create this loop which zooms in and out. Note that these animations produced by 3PI, while based on 3D modeling, are themselves 2D. So you always have to do a few extra steps if you want to convert them to true 3D stereo videos, like with the previous example. Converting this animation to 3D would be trickier than the previous example. Basically, you would have to create a stereo pair of the original image and a stereo pair of the original depth map to create a left and right depth map, then you would have to run 3PI twice, one for each eye view, and combine the videos. I should mention that it's possible to make similar animations from a 2D image and depth map using just Stereo Photo Maker, and here's an example. However, as you can probably tell, using AI gives a considerably smoother result, as well as making possible a variety of camera movement. And the same considerations for converting this to a 3D stereo video would apply. So that wraps up the AI programs I wanted to walk through with you today. But briefly, here's a look at what's coming down the road. This AI can take any ordinary 2D video, extrapolate a 3D scene from it, and apply 3D video effects. Meanwhile, this one, which promises space-time view synthesis, is even more amazing. I'll play a little bit of the researcher's video. Our method builds a representation for dynamic scenes from a single monocular input video like the one shown here, which exhibits challenging motion and scene structures. With this representation, we are able to render novel views and times. This lets us, for example, freeze time and move the camera, freeze the camera and move time, or a combination of the two. Our method only requires a single view and can therefore be used on natural videos collected in the wild, 
as long as camera pose can be extracted, for example, using class. While our method does not explicitly compute depth maps, we can visualize the expected termination depth of each ray, which gives us some indication as to the reconstructed scene geometry, shown here. That's it. Thank you for listening today, and I hope it's added some interesting and useful tools to your 3D toolbox. I think the future for 3D AI, barring any unforeseen complications, is quite bright, and I'll see you there.